Welcome to our review on blood. So the first thing we need to know is what blood actually is made of. And there are four parts you need to know. The red blood cells, the white blood cells, plasma and platelets. If we consider the red blood cells first of all, then the function of our red blood cells is to carry oxygen around the body. So they've got a few adaptations that make them well suited for this purpose. First of all, they're actually very small to allow them to fit through those tiny capillaries. And they've got this large surface area to volume ratio so that oxygen can rapidly diffuse across that membrane. They've also got a very special shape, which is called a biconcave disc shape. And the whole purpose behind that is to increase the surface area to volume ratio. And you can see what we mean by biconcave disc if you look at the little picture there. It's basically kind of like uh, those refreshers or palmer violet sweets you get. Inside our red blood cell, we've got a special protein called hemoglobin, which is an example of a carrier protein. And it's to that hemoglobin that the oxygen is going to join to be carried around the body. And to make as much space for that hemoglobin as possible, the red blood cells have no nucleus. So that means that it can be packed full of hemoglobin to transport more oxygen. What we find happening when our actual red blood cells go towards the lungs, as they pass through the capillaries that surround the alveoli, then the hemoglobin reacts with oxygen to make that oxyhemoglobin. And then when the blood is taken to respiring tissues, the oxyhemoglobin breaks down, releasing that oxygen so that it can then be delivered to the respiring cells. The second type of cell we need to know about in our blood are the white blood cells. Now, you can identify the white blood cells quite easily in microscope images because they're the larger ones with a really clear nucleus. So their whole purpose in our body is to fight infections. And they do this in one of two ways. First way is by making antibodies. And the second way is by engulfing and digesting the pathogen. So they're the two ways that our body's going to fight infection. And we're going to find out more about that in the B6 topic next year. Our third part of the blood we need to know about are the platelets. Now, platelets' whole purpose is to help your blood to clot. So two really important reasons behind this. First of all, it prevents too much blood loss, so it's not like you're going to bleed to death from a paper cut because of your delightful little platelets. And secondly, it's going to seal those wounds, which is going to help to reduce your chance of infection. Because if they've sealed the wound, then bacteria and viruses, for example, can't get directly into your bloodstream. So the final part of our blood is actually the bit that everything else floats around in, which is this straw coloured liquid called plasma. Now, it's not just the medium to allow the cells to be able to tra be transported around the actual body, but it's also capable of carrying other things in addition to those cells. So digested food will be in there. Any waste products like carbon dioxide will be present. The hormones and the antibodies, all of those are transported in our plasma. So make sure that at the end of this review, you know the four different parts of the blood and their roles, as well as their ad adaptations where needed.